Two of the Premiership giants clashed at Highbury on the 28th of August 1999. Between them, Arsenal and Manchester United had won 18 major honours during the 90s. The game also boasted the most prolific attack and the meanest of defences in English football. United had scored 80 goals the previous season, while Arsenal had conceded only 17. Thierry Henry was one of the new galaxy of stars at Highbury. He joined the club from Juventus in the summer. Arsenal were without five key players. Their DOS goalkeeper David Seaman, skipper Tony Adams and left-back Nigel Winterburn. Midfielder Emmanuel Petit was also injured, while Mark Overmars started on the bench. Much for Sir Alex Ferguson and Sir Bobby Charlton to discuss. United were without Mark Bosnich. Raymond van der Howe replaced him in goal. Phil Neville continued to stand in for brother Gary. And Henning Berg took the place of fellow Norwegian international Ronnie Jonsson. The Arsenal fans were full of hope, but United hadn't lost a league game in 1999. Your commentator in North London is Alan Parry. A little bit of a win behind Manchester United's backs as they get the fixture underway. Dennis Irwin finding Dwight York, Martin Keown sticking very close to him, Paul Scholes. Henri going in strongly against Neville, and now the Frenchman in possession. Did well, and lays it on for Dixon, thought about the shot, thought better of it. His last goal for Arsenal three years ago. And that effort never really likely to trouble Van der Howe. And the challenges continue to thump in in that middle third of the field. Rather grim-faced, Alex Ferguson looks on. Beckham. And Beckham was fouled. The Manchester United fans on that far side not too convinced about it, but the referee had no hesitation. Yep, Stam making his way forward for the free kick, which Beckham, I guess, will take himself. So the other option alongside him, Ryan Giggs. It is Beckham though, and it's a beauty, and Cole's header hits the bar. Arsenal close to conceding the first goal of the game. Andy Cole so dismayed that that stayed out as Erwin finds Scholes. On it goes to Keane. Scholes winning it back again, but he's given it away inadvertently there to Canu. And on it goes to Thierry Henry, who's got the pace to keep going here. Could save Van der Howe. Well, talk about end-to-end -end action. We almost had a goal for both teams. Great break here, lovely ball. And Henry, once he gets in behind the last defender like that, usually doesn't miss. He did this time. Scholes. Good header on. Finds Bergkamp. Henri ready for the return ball. Bergkamp decided to go for goal. And wasn't far away. Beautiful curl on that shot there, as you can see from the slow mo. Scholes. This is Cole. Now Beckham. The through ball for Giggs is brilliant. Well. Ryan Giggs, of all people, to miss what was, at this high standard, a relatively simple chance here. It's a lovely ball by Beckham, and the awareness and running off the ball, the ball shown by Giggs was excellent, but the finish wasn't. Really thought he was going to hit the target here, Ryan Giggs. It's gold. A challenge by Parler, now Giggs. Dwight York, a lovely reverse ball. Giggs will have to motor to keep this in. Lost the race.
Bergkamp touching it on to Kanu. And the Nigerian foul there by Bergen is an instant free kick that releases Bergkamp. He's got Henri up with him. Didn't see him, went for goal himself. And Henri might have been better placed, but you can hardly question Dennis Bergkamp when you look at his goal scoring record. 16 last season. Only Nicholas and Elka scored more. Jungberg. Canu takes over. Well, he's done brilliantly here. Canu, and what a shot! Oh, that would have been one of the goals of the season if Raymond van der Hau hadn't produced such a brilliant save. <laughs> Fabulous skill from Canu. He was so far out there, that was heading for the top of the net. Well, even Mark Bosnich, or indeed Peter Schmeichel, couldn't have bettered that. Vieira. Silvino. Vieira again. Upson flicks it on. Beckham up against Bergkamp, facing his own goal, unusual for David Beckham. But how well he coped. And he's still motoring forward onto the return ball. It was a good challenge by Upson to stop him. Andy go. Here's Beckham. Given away to Henri. One of the narrower pitches in the division here at Highbury, so uh, wide players like David Beckham, Henry in the opposition don't get much room to manoeuvre. Keown has lost the battle there, and Andy Cole is in a great position. Oh, well played, Meninga. That all happened so suddenly. Keown for once being beaten and at the other end Patrick Vieira threatening that's a foul foul on Stam Beckham's through ball oh that was an important header by Keown but they've got it back here Manchester United Skulls lay off Dwight York hits it and again the goalkeeper has kept Arsenal in it well, Dwight York must have thought another goal is on the way here. The goalkeeper stranded there, though. And Arsenal just about survived. Henning Berg close. Goalkeeper couldn't find a way through the crowd. And it looked for a moment as though Manchester United were going to take the lead here. Stam's header. Dixon. Good ball for Canu. Bergkamp on mark if he sees him. And he has. And on it goes to Jungberg. He scored. He loves playing against Manchester United. Two goals in his Highbury career. And they've both come against their biggest rivals. Four minutes of the half remaining. Arsenal draw first blood. Canu inevitably playing an important part in the goal. So too did Dennis Bergkamp. But uh, a finish as cool as you like from the young Swede, Frederick Jungberg. Good ball from Dwight York. Neville. This is Beckham. The whistle approaching as it's Played into the middle, Vieira was there in the right place to get it clear. And Manchester United get another free kick. 
Well, according to my watch, that's the end of the added time now, so there will literally be only a matter of a handful of seconds remaining. Beckham will take the free kick. Arsenal defended well. Scholes back into the crowd, and Keown just about got it clear, but it's only gone as far as Giggs. Keown's there again, and now the referee finally does blow the half-time whistle, and all around the stadium, apart from the tiny corner where the Manchester United fans are housed, fans stand to applaud Arsenal off the field, and in particular, Frederick Jungberg for his goal five minutes before half-time. Raymond van der Hau in the Manchester United goal and Alex Maninga guarding Arsenal's net. Both had outstanding displays in that first 45 minutes. That's the only reason that we didn't have more goals to enjoy. But certainly Jungberg enjoyed his, only his second ever as an Arsenal player. And as I mentioned, the first also came against Manchester United. There's a good quiz question for you. Terrific first half here. We're already looking forward to the second 45 minutes at Highbury, but the score at half-time, Arsenal 1, Manchester United 0. Silvino, the left-back replacement for Nigel Winterburn with the through ball over the head of Canu, guided back by Jack Stamm. Henningberg for Manchester United. And here's Dwight York, one back off him by Upson, Silvino releases it, Keane can't keep possession. And the battle for the tackles in the middle of the field, this time goes Manchester United's way, they've been given the free kick. United winning their fifth Premiership title in seven seasons since the league was formed, and runner-up on the other two occasions. They've been champions in England, three times in the last four seasons Manchester United an unbelievable record but even when they won the title last season they lost here They're trying to get back on level terms now as York fails to find a way through Here's Scholes, Giggs offside. And one thing that Manchester United haven't achieved today is to find a way around Arsenal's swift-moving offside trap. They've fallen into that far too often, I would think, for Alex Ferguson's liking. Henri, headed away by Bird. Silvino, Henri. Good quick interpassing in the middle of the field. Patrick Vieira, Canu. And again, the big Nigerian. Such a deft touch for such a tall man. Here's Silvino. Given away to Keane. A rare mistake in a game of excellent quality. Parlo with the shot! My word, that was close. Explosive finish there from Ray Parler, who ended last season in great goal-scoring form. Scored six times in the final 15 games in the Premiership. Keown, brilliant. Just got caught on the ankle, limping as Bergkamp carries on the attack. Oh, that produced another... Fine save by Raymond van der Hau. Well, van der Hau's never made more than two consecutive appearances in his four seasons at Manchester United. He's going to have to now because uh, Bosnich is going to be out for a while yet. But he has produced an excellent display here today, the 34-year-old. But even he would have been powerless to stop that going in as Matthew Upson met the flick on. Now Bergkamp. Bergkamp goes down, but the referee's actually given the free kick the other way. But Arsenal so unlucky not to increase their lead here. And it came from an unlikely source in the 20-year-old Matthew Upson. 
and Manchester United have had a let off and go forward dangerously themselves Ryan Giggs Skulls here's Beckham Cole on the far post York taps it in but the linesman's flag immediately rules out the celebration I just wonder if he'd have let the header from Andy Cole go into the net without applying the finishing touch whether the same decision would have happened let's have a look at the replay here lovely ball wasn't it by Beckham then the header by Cole well actually it would never have gone in anyway and it almost brushed the arm too you have to say there of Keown. here's Vieira Scholes wins it back Roy Keane plays it on the layoff by Cole Keane's there Manchester United have equalised through the captain Roy Keane this is Patrick Vieira. Jungberg down the right, being urged by the Arsenal bench to take on the nearest man, who is Ryan Giggs. And he's delivered. Vieira. Jungberg lost his man beautifully then. The ball to Henri. Bergkamp straight into the hands of Van der Howe. Poor angle, really, for Dennis Bergkamp to get any power or pace on the header. Beckham for Manchester United. Glorious ball, that was, to Dwight York. Keown's defending has been outstanding today. Carl has given it away, though. Dwight York again. Here's Ryan Giggs. Lovely little touch. Nicky Butts there. York. Vieira's challenge. Did brilliantly there, Vieira. Wanted that ball to be his. Now... Dennis Bergkamp and Vieira has continued his run but Stam at the pace to get Manchester United out of trouble there Vieira over Mars Shuka my word <laughs> That would have been the debut goal to top them all if it had gone in. Must have been all of 35, if not 40 yards from goal. Look at that, he was only just over the halfway line. Incredible effort, incredibly wide, it has to be said as well, but uh, confident start. Here's Sheringham, the other substitute, Giggs. Good run by Ryan Giggs. He's been forced wide, though. Keown almost inevitably there to clear. Erwin couldn't keep it in play. Alex Ferguson's not too happy with the referee over something that happened there with Giggs on the far side. And Alex Ferguson's never slow to let officials know what he thinks. And the fourth official waves him back onto his seat. Dwight York Beckham to his right and gets possession now three in the box for Manchester United York's one of them big appeal for a penalty as Nicky Butt went down then Beckham goes down Keane and Vieira clash Giggs in possession and the referee saw what went on there between Keane and Vieira how is he going to deal with it Vieira just letting his temper get the better of him in the last few minutes, and he and Stam have a confrontation. Well, I'm afraid this is not the first time we've seen scenes of a similar nature when these two teams meet, and the referee's got some sorting out to do here, and I wouldn't be surprised if a red card is flourished. Not like Yap Stam, he's normally a very calm, cool customer, I have to say. I've never seen him react quite like that before. There was a head-to-head -head confrontation between him and Vieira. Now the referee being surrounded by players has got some difficult decisions to make, Graham Paul. That was the first challenge by Vieira. Then he and Keane clashed. Keane almost retaliated, and Vieira should be in trouble for that. He was the aggressor there, without doubt.
Dwight York looking for Beckham. Good challenge by Silvino. Now Vieira. Good ball. A lovely little header as well. Parlour's dispossessed though by Giggs. Danger here for Arsenal. Ryan Giggs hits it and it comes to Roy Keane. And Keane has slipped home the winner, surely. Two and a half minutes to go. The captain gets his second goal of the game. And Manchester United players and fans celebrate. And Arsenal caught cold. Parlour, one of those responsible for the errors in particular being dispossessed there by Ryan Giggs he tried to shoot the ball deflected straight into the path of Roy Keane and there was never any doubt that Keane was going to slide it home for his second goal of the game his second goal of the season and surely the winner well it's not very often that Arsenal can see two goals in any match Jungberg, clever. But Berg and Stamm have been pretty immovable objects in Manchester United's defence today. Well, I left my watch running and it's now showing 49 minutes. This could be the last meaningful action here for Arsenal. They have a free kick. It might be their final hope of an equalising goal. And the header by Upson, save, but on the line, turned in. What will the referee give here? I don't think he's allowed it. Well, a moment of real controversy. Calm down is his instruction to everyone. He's gone across to his linesman to find out what his view of the incident was well a real major talking point at the end here Martin Keown told to go away what's the linesman's view I don't think he's allowed the goal that's for sure now Arsenal players go to the linesman concern but you can tell from the body language there that that goal has not been allowed presumably Let's have a look at it again here. The referee deciding there was a foul. Now, it was right on the line there. He had a hand on the ball as Keown turned it in. Now, Keown will feel that that ball was there to be turned over. But the referee will feel that Van der Howe had both hands on the ball and therefore was in possession. And that that was a foul. Well, what a story we've got here. Because with Mark Bosnich out injured... Manchester United have now lost their number two goalkeeper, Raymond van der Howe, and Nicky Culkin, who's only 20 and who has never played in a first-team match. He's played in a couple of pre-season friendlies and the like, but he's never played in a competitive fixture for Manchester United. Comes on for what I think might be the shortest debut in history, because I would strongly believe that the referee will blow the whistle here. Well, of course, there'll be some time to be added for this stoppage to van der Hoe clearly has got a pretty horrible knock in the face there but there can only be three or four seconds to go so here's Colkin's first kick in Premiership football and there is the whistle as I expected that is the briefest debut in history Colkin's come on kicked the ball once the final whistle's blown final score in the biggest game of the season so far in the English Premiership Arsenal won Manchester United 2 Indeed, it did prove to be the briefest of debuts for Nick Culkin and he never appeared in a Premiership game again. The Red Devils continued their domination of the English game and romped to the title ahead of Arsenal. They only just pipped them to the post the previous season when one point separated the two sides. This time, however, United excelled themselves and finished with 91 points, 18 clear of the Gunners.